Welcome to the ceramic wheel. In terms of our setup, over here we have our wheel head. This is our splash pan. And over here we have our foot pedal. When my heel is down, the wheel is off. As I move my foot forward, the speed increases. Once I get the wheel to the speed I want, I can release my foot and it will maintain that speed. I'm gonna press down on my heel again to get that off. In terms of our setup, you want your feet to be level and your nose to be above the wheel head and over the center. Especially as a beginner, you're gonna to wanna to be able to lean on each leg for support. So make sure to put support under your leg. Um, usually most studios will have bricks. I use yoga blocks just cause that's what I have around. Uh, in terms of the direction and where we focus on the wheel, if you're right-handed, this is the sweet spot and you're gonna want the wheel to turn into your palm. If you feel it turning into your fingertips, that is the wrong direction. So you can flip the direction of your wheel using a switch. And if you're left-handed, you're gonna want the wheel turning into your palm. This side will be the sweet spot, the left side of the wheel. And again, if you feel it going into your fingertips rather than your palm, you're gonna flip the direction. So the wheel should always be going into your palm. So I have my piece of clay that I have already wedged. It's prepped and ready to go. And we want to first attach this to our wheel head. I'm going to use just the two drops of water. We want to add just enough water to get this dam. We don't want so much water that our clay is sliding around. I'm going to go ahead and slam this down. I'm not setting it. I am slamming it down. You can see that we're a little off center. No problem there. What I can do is rotate my wheel and I wanna rotate it so that my adjustments are done by pushing the clay rather than pulling. I'm slowly rotating it. If I just try to push without any rotating motion, the clay might be harder to move. I'm eyeballing it once it looks like it's about centered. I'll give it two pats on top and I'll get my wheel just barely moving. I'm gonna dip one finger in water and attach the clay all the way around. And what I'm looking for is to get rid of the seam. Once it's attached, I can go ahead and dip both hands in the water, get my clay nice and wet, as well as my wheel head, and then I can increase the speed. At this point, we've been at a low speed. We're gonna go all the way, pedal to the metal at this point. If we don't go at the fastest speed, it ends up being more work for us. Uh, that's a common mistake beginners make. Uh, you can think of it as, you know, you have to hold the position longer, um, so speed is your friend. The first thing we want to do is cone up. How we begin to do that is by applying pressure on this part of each hand. So it's our palm, and our fingers really aren't doing any of the work, they're just kind of around for the ride. You can see right away that the clay has gotten kind of sticky, so anytime it gets sticky or the wheel head gets hot, we're gonna get a little more water. It should always feel smooth and we shouldn't feel any heat. So again, coning up, it's with the palms of our hand and pressure with both. You should see the clay go straight up between your hands. A common mistake beginners make at this point is by moving up the clay like this and they end up creating a kind of a pocket like this. To fix that, if that happens, you just wanna start pressing it down without creating a pocket. But once we've coned up, we can go ahead and cone down our dominant hand is on the top, slowly pushing down. The left hand is on the side, evening out all the clay as it goes down. And again, anytime it gets sticky, we'll grab a little more water. We're, we're careful not to grab too much because the more water we add, the less time that we have to work with our clay. So we're gonna continue to go down until everything fills in. This is a good opportunity to do a little sponge cleanup. This is super useful for beginners as well. You have your sponge taco in your dominant hand. Elbows are on my legs for support. I'm going straight down right above the clay I wanna get rid of. And now I can go ahead and get back to centering. So see my clay could use a little, and my wheel head could use a little water. So anytime our wheel gets 
clay, we want to get that out of the way using the blade side of our wooden tool. I'm pressing down with my uh, left hand. My dominant hand is holding the tool. And now we're ready to finish centering. So from here, anything on the top will be taken care of with my right hand because I'm right-handed. And anything on the side will be taken care of with this part of my palm. Because we're gonna be throwing a bowl, we're gonna, we're pretty close to where we wanna be, we're just gonna even it out. A common mistake here that beginners make is they'll apply pressure to the center rather than right here in front of your belly. Uh, what that ends up doing is creates this little, it creates this little pocket that we don't want, we want it to be level. So if that happens, shift your hand a little lower so it's about right here. That's how you'll get a nice flat top. And a uh, common mistake with this left hand, we'll see uh, people kind of adjust their hand too far this way, so you'll get a little mushroom top. Sometimes the hand can be far too far in, so you'll get a little flat thing. What we want to do is be, we want to be right about here. So what that looks like is when we do everything together, we're going to get our clay nice and even. And how we can tell that we're all done centering is if we rest one finger against the side, and it doesn't bounce, we're good to go. Anytime we're letting go of the clay, it's a gentle release. If you're wondering what happened when your clay felt centered and all of a sudden it got knocked off centered, that could, that was likely what happened, it was just that you let go a little too quick. Um, you wanna think of each cycle and make sure you release accordingly. So that's why, again, the speed is on your side. From here, we know we're all good to go. So we can go ahead and get our sponge taco in my dominant hand. I'm supporting my right hand with my left, elbows are on my leg, and my nose is right over the center. I'm gonna start by pushing down. And a common mistake here, beginners might go a little off center. What you can do is kind of get to a clean side of your sponge and start again and keep going down. You wanna remove your sponge and see how far down you've gone. We're aiming for about half an inch at this point. We wanna be careful not to go all the way through because what we're doing at this point is creating the base of our bowl. When we think we're about there, we can go ahead and get our wheel off by pushing down on my foot pedal. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my needle tool to see exactly how much clay we have on the bottom. I'm gonna make sure my wheel is off so I don't accidentally cut a hole through the base. Put my, thing, my needle tool through, slide my finger down until I hit the clay and lift up. And I can see that we're um, where we wanna be if we're not gonna be trimming our foot yet, um, which is what some, you know, that's not a bad idea for your first bowl. Um, we'll save trimming maybe for the next one. And so if we were trimming uh, somewhere about three quarters of an inch is where we, we would wanna be right now. We're closer to half an inch. So we're going back to full speed. I'm gonna press down to get rid of that needle mark. Whenever my sponge gets like this, I'm losing control, it's sticky. So we wanna go ahead and make sure to clean that out fully. It'll help my grip and I can get more control. Another common mistake uh, beginners make um, is, well, we all make, <laughs> is uh, you know going down a little too far can happen. This is the step where we can fix it. Once we stretched out, uh, our floor is gonna be our floor. If you wanna do anything, it would be an additive, you know, it's slipping and scoring. Um, so here, you can actually create a ridge and start pushing that down. But you wanna be careful not to create a giant air pocket because air pockets will explode in the kiln. So what we're gonna do is go back and forth between this ridge and pulling that out. And that's how we can if we, for any reason, end up going a little too thin and we need to fix that, we can mend it like so. And so you can see that there's no possibility that we created an air pocket because we kept it clear all the way down. Now we can compress and blend in. And that's a, a quick way to save your bowl. Uh, now that we've measured it, um, we can go ahead and compress we're ready to start pulling out our piece. So what we want to do is use the fingers to pull and how our sponge is set up. With our dominant hand, we have our fingertips over 
and then our other one goes over as well and we get our sponge into our piece and pull towards our belly button. Common mistakes at this point, we often see, um, you know, we don't wanna pull out too far, um, but the, the angle of our fingertips will make a difference. So if we angle it this way, we end up with the slope. If we tuck our finger in, we really get a nice uh, wall to work with for our next step. So that's kind of closer to what we're going for. At this point, we've pulled so much clay, we're very likely to get an S crack. So to prevent that from happening, we're gonna fold our sponge in half, compress against the base and slide over to the right until we've hit everything. It never hurts to go over twice. The last thing I'd want is for you to have a crack after you've gone through all the steps of getting your beautiful piece. Uh, before we move on to the next step, I always recommend this housekeeping step. We are gonna be pulling a cylinder next. Um, with any, any shape you make on the wheel, the foundational steps are centering, opening it up, compressing the base, pulling the walls, and then shaping, trimming the lip, trimming our foot. Um, but what we wanna do is do our little folded sponge housekeeping. That's gonna set us up. And this is when we're gonna get down to medium speed and we're gonna make sure our, our sponge is as clean as possible because uh, I would say along with centering, pulling our walls can be one of the trickier steps when we're just starting out. So with our nice and clean sponge, we will get our sponge taco. I'm going to go ahead and wet my fingertips in my left hand and string my left thumb through. My sponge is on the outside and my fingertips are on the inside. My elbow is on my leg for support and I'm compressing against the base and then pulling up slowly. And this is when we're paying attention to the thickness of our walls in the foot. This is the time where we can get that the way we would like. So sometimes the clay can kind of feel stuck towards the foot. The way we can correct that is by spending a little longer on the base and waiting till I build that ridge and then taking that up the side. And that's how we can prevent having kind of a thicker base and uh, you know a thinner rim. We want it even throughout the whole piece. So I think I'll give this one more pull. I am again cleaning my sponge because I don't want to risk it catching out off this piece is the fingers on the inside, sponge on the outside, I'm compressing and slowly pulling up. We're not worried about our lip getting wonky. That can um, happen when we are evening out our walls, especially when we first start throwing. But we can come in with our needle tool and trim that right up. There are a few ways to trim. One is you can hold it. If you're confident your walls are nice and even, this is a great way to go. You can hold your needle tool with both your hands. Your elbows are nice and tight against your side so you have more control. You don't want your needle tool wiggling. It needs to be nice and tight. You're gonna start from the side, go through, and then lift up. And if it gets stuck like that, which it can often happen when you first start, you wanna get this off in all these chunky pieces you can pull. You don't wanna go in with your fingertips cause it'll push it in more. So this is a good example. I'll grab it from the top and pull that right off. And any of these pieces will wanna get rid of. Something like that I can blend out. This is something I wanna get off. So you can see I use my needle tool. I don't use my fingertips. Um, stuff like this, I might just go in with my needle tool just to make it a little quick cleanup. And so the other way I recommend trimming is if you this one uh, you're not comfortable with or you feel like your walls are a little thin and you need a little support, we'll go back to medium speed. And how you can trim that way is with one finger that's wet so it can glide along the inside. And then our needle tool will slowly go through. Um, beginners will often feel the needle tool kind of you know, we lose control. A good way to prevent that is by first sketching our line in and then going through. So hold it there and then go all the way through and then lift up. And to clean this up and round out our lip, we can wet these two fingers. 
on our left hand, and then our right one is on top. Or you can go in with your sponge. And now we're ready to start shaping our bowl. With this one, you'll want to grab your wooden rib tool with the circular thicker side facing the base. And this will be held in your left hand. We can go ahead and dip our tool so it slides up the side. And our left hand is supported by our right, elbows on my leg. And I'm going to apply pressure to the wall starting from the base and slowly making my way up to shape my piece. Uh, clay will come off during this step. We can wipe that right off and continue going and dip again and we can continue going over any areas we want to adjust. Uh, things we want to avoid, uh, we really want to be careful that we don't have sitting water in the base of our piece. That will sit and erode and lead to cracking. So we'll use our sponge to wipe any sitting water if that comes up. Uh, and then you can go ahead and continue shaping until you're happy. I think for this piece, I'll open it up a little more. And then we're ready to go ahead and trim that foot using our wooden tool. So for this, we have our blade side up. I'm holding it with my right hand and my left hand is on the top for support. I'm gonna first find that angle that my bowl has already and keep going. I wanna be careful um, not to start on the bottom and push in. That will push our clay up against our bowl. What we wanna do is start high and cut that clay away. So we'll continue. Um, if I go this way, we'd end up cutting all the way through. So we wanna make sure that we're paying attention to the angle and cutting off just what we need. I'll continue until I see the wheel head. And then with our needle tool, we can remove that clay. Press down with one finger, slide in until we hit the side of the bowl. And then we can go ahead and press down with our heel to get the wheel off. Cut through with your needle tool and pull that clay off. We'll go back to our wooden tool to clean up any of this clay. We want to angle our tool so the clay moves away from our wheel, um, from our bowl, rather than benching up next to it and sticking. And in terms of touching up the foot and the sides, our wooden tool can do a lot. I can press this against the side to continue trimming or refining. I can go up the side to polish this out. I can even apply pressure with my fingers or sponge. You can go in with your straight edge on your wooden tool as well to clean that up with your sponge. And this is just to, if there's any areas that the rib tool isn't quite reaching. this up a hair. And this is a you know good time to finalize any little last minute touches, kind of clean up our sides and the rim. If you want to add any decorative elements, now would be the time. Some things you can do with the tools you've already seen. You can use the, um, not the blade side, but the straight side to do some decorative elements. You can use your fingertips even. And let's say you didn't want that and you wanted to remove it, you can even go in with these tools and get it right back to where you were. So using your rib on the outside, your sponge on the inside, you can get back to where you were. So there's a lot of options. Whenever you're ready to go ahead and get your piece off, you can go ahead and hit your, oh, you just wanna to touch up the base real quick. That'll make trimming a little bit easier. And it's, you know, before we get this off the wheel, you wanna get all this little stuff. and get our, our wheel off, splash water on one side, and get our wire tool nice and taut. 
and go all the way through the base. And we want to see movement. And my wire tool, I'm keeping it down and going all the way to the side. I'm careful not to cut off any of the extra. I just want to go straight and down. And then from here, I can take my wear board and make sure to get that nice and wet as well. And then I can slide it directly onto here. I want to make sure even things like this would be a problem. We don't want any spot where it can catch. So that looks a little better. Now I can go ahead and I want to match up my wear board to the wheel and then go ahead and slide this piece straight on. And we're all set.